Okay, good morning everyone. Um, so um, we are going to continue on to go into the creative tasks uh, for unit three. Um, uh, I do have them unlocked uh, to where uh, you actually see 3.5 uh, section. Uh, there are two sample creative tasks that we're going to go over. I'm going to kind of walk through them with you uh, in this video. Uh, but first, I want to actually go over this design document that we got here. And uh, this is the one that was uh, actually generated uh, by uh, CMUCS Academy. Uh, but I kind of streamlined it. I took a little bit of the stuff out and everything just so it's a little bit more streamlined uh, for your effective use. Um, uh, I know Miss Stevens has it uh, put up into uh, your uh, your Schoology as well as uh, there's multiple ways to access it. I also put it uh, in Neuro as a PDF and a Word document. So uh, if you want, if you want to have Miss Stevens print it out, you can print it out. However you want to do it. Uh, but uh, the main intent is so you actually have this document, uh, and we are going to lay kind of down the expectations. Uh, for doing creative tasks uh, throughout the rest of the semester uh, but just kind of generally using this document effectively is, is an important thing of how we can actually go through this process uh, because uh, one thing that we want to do is actually make the creative tasks uh, a, a bigger element of what we're actually doing here in uh, the game programming uh, class uh, to where um, we really want to rely on how you're actually developing as a coder uh, so we can actually uh, we can actually use these and and you've probably seen rubrics before uh, anytime we use a rubric it, it's usually because you're grading something uh, that can be very subjective uh, so so that's why they have a rubric set up on this uh, anytime that we actually develop and and uh, and go through uh, grading your uh, your creative tasks uh, so like I said, it's starting out, you can see that there's a rubric here uh, to where uh, it's broken up into a few categories. Uh, there's a, the category of program design, program development, and a reflection, as well as a, a little bit of bonus just uh, so you can kind of dive in and, and kind of really think about things. So uh, as far as program design, uh, program design, uh, the 30 point value, students design of uh, Students' design of the program clearly demonstrates its purpose and incorporates concepts from the unit. Uh, so, so specifically when we're talking about design itself, uh, seeing as that that top tier, bottom tier is is students' design of the program does not use concepts from the unit. So, this is the one that's a little bit more concrete. Uh, so, like we just finished up unit three. Unit three has a uh, has a few elements that we went into. We went into the on mouse move, the on mouse drag. Uh, then we also talked about conditionals a little bit. Uh, just starting out only using if and else statements or basically very, very fine lined inclusive uh, ifs. Uh, we, we didn't go back into the elif yet because elif is actually going to be in uh, unit four. So we just kind of wanted to start out uh, using ifs and elses. Uh, just specifically like that. Uh, so, so starting out with those conditionals, uh, and then uh, also we got a little bit more into helper functions. Helper functions being kind of uh, looking at the fact that you can still you can still define your own function, utilizing uh, the the pre-built functions that are actually in CMU CS Academy and Python itself. Uh, so. Uh, basically developing a help, helper function uh, to kind of look at a way to to use that information and kind of pipeline it in uh, so you can actually um, you can actually uh, create something a little bit uh, a, a little bit more uh, um, not as a uh, not n not not as toned down like like you you have you have the uh, the versatility where you can actually add a little bit more elements and kind of uh, create your own workflow and everything. Uh, so, so that's program design. Program development, of course, is uh, so students uh, on the top end. Students identifies uh, the student identifies at least one opportunity or difficulty during a course of coding, and the student explains how they incorporate or resolve this. Uh, and then on the bottom end, student does not identify an opportunity or difficulty. So, so 
this is kind of like a self-reflection aspect of it right so you're going in and you're like well maybe I have trouble kind of concepting things and understanding uh, what the difference between on mouse move and on mouse drag is and and so uh, you identified that yourself uh, and then you actually you actually challenge yourself when you do your creative tasks to make something that really uh, shows the, the the differences between it like the dragging motion vice just uh, just just moving like in other words a button press and dragging or not button press and just moving so so you're actually developing your program so that you can actually show the differences of that uh, when you're actually interacting uh, with whatever you've actually written in your script itself um, and then lastly reflection so a student is able to identify and explain at least two coding concepts uh, from the unit and how they are applied to the program uh, students not a, able to identify so so this is specifically uh, it kind of ties in both the uh, the other things of it the, the program design and the program development but this is where you you're you're writing down in and identifying those things that you actually have taken from the unit and it doesn't just mean unit 3 specifically I mean you can always you can always use elements of, of what we've learned in uh, unit one and unit two as well uh, and and to uh, to make your program work sometimes you might have to, to utilize things that we haven't really gone over yet uh, but it's better to try to focus on the stuff that we have gone over uh, just so you can ca kind of build and you can you can add on to on to what you're trying to hone down and and uh, and really develop so. So that's that's the the three little uh, different areas of of the way that this is graded, and then you can add a little bit more in as you go through that. Uh, like like the bonuses, if a student de demonstrates a high quality work in the areas including but not limited to originality, cleverness, complexity, uh, an engaging and compelling CT bonus uh, may be awarded. In other words, uh, this is where you're adding those extra elements. Maybe you're going out of your way and you're trying to uh, to add like an on key press or, or something of that nature so you can actually add a little bit more interaction into the program stuff that we haven't gone over yet that we're going to go in into unit four and unit five so so uh, there are ways that you can actually get a little bit of extra extra points there as well as a uh, there, there's also a comment block so so we can actually uh, uh, go back in and make a few comments on the stuff that you're actually doing uh, so now the way that this document is actually broken up is uh, so you get you got a few areas here and this is where uh, a lot of times uh, when you go through design or uh, developing something engineering process uh, it's very important not just to jump in and just start trying to code uh, Sometimes it's better to sit back, maybe do some research on Google, uh, jump around uh, on, on other assets of the internet, crack open a book, look up some information. But anytime you develop something, it's always good to start out with research. Uh, so you really got to sit down and start to think about things before you actually try to just create stuff. Uh, so. So let's say, uh, describe your program and what you envision the app will do. Uh, and at this step, uh, at this step, do not be concerned about how to do it, right? So, so let's say, okay, right here, I want to make a a kind of a a drag block game. So maybe. We have a few blocks, and if you've ever heard things like tangrams or or anything like that, let's say we have a few blocks, and then we have a grid, and I want to take those and, and drag them on there. And uh, and make something maybe maybe it's set up. Uh, what we'll, we'll have to think about a few things like like how we're actually going to do that interaction. Uh, so key points would may, maybe be like uh, interaction. 
uh, also uh, making sure that the grid can be covered by pieces so just some things to kind of like note down think about and think about just how, how we can actually start and and, and develop this game uh, and then in the next part here you're looking at it and then this is more specifically like talking about the the the, the actual canvas design right so here are our canvas uh, 0 to 0 to 400 400 uh, this is where we're like breaking down that canvas to think about like what we're actually going to do. So let's say uh, I'm going to develop a five by six uh, that that's on our, our right side of our canvas, and uh, and then maybe I'll make some notes out here to think about this. So if it's a five by six, that means there's going to be a total of thirty blocks out there. So if I'm creating these blocks that are going to be dragged onto it, I got to make sure that it's made up of a total of 30 blocks. So that's five. So we got a total of 15 so far. Okay, that's 20 total. And then 23. 24 and 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now, I didn't really think that out uh, to see if maybe it would actually fill the space. Don't know yet. Uh, but just kind of concepting it out and everything, uh, we know that that is something that we're going to actually have to concern ourselves about as, as we actually create that, right? Uh, and, and it might not matter because depending on how, she, how we build that and everything, it it uh it might not uh it might not matter because we have to build into the code if we have like collisions and stuff and it doesn't allow us to play the piece and stuff like that. So that's where you start talking about that kind of stuff. Uh, you actually sit down and start thinking about the actual functions that are in Python so we can actually start building that project. So so like things like on mouse oops else move on mouse drag uh, if statement else statement And just start talking about things like that so so we know in our on mouse move technically if the the way it interacts should we actually have anything happening when we actually use an on mouse move probably not uh, just because uh, uh, what we're actually developing here uh, we don't want to just like move onto the canvas and everything just start going crazy and haywire and getting all scattered over the place so so nothing there uh, not used uh, we would actually want to use this instead the on mouse drag for for moving our blocks and then we would actually use the conditionals and everything to kind of uh, think about how we're actually going to grab those blocks and move around so so that's th that part and that's how you can actually dive into it more uh, and then creative tasks reflection difficulties opportunities this is where you really do a deep dive and you start to think about the things that you actually want to create and and like how you're going to actually go about the process of actually doing that uh, the finished 
product code outline this is where we actually sit down and really start to kind of hammer out how we're actually going to put this together and structure it out uh, in future goals uh, this is actually just kind of talking about hey I could actually make the program a little bit better by doing these things uh, I don't know certain certain things that will actually help it out so like I, I can always just try and draw them down there uh, for future goals of what I actually want to do with, with, with the, the next programs. Uh, so sorry I took, uh, I took a little bit of time getting through that design document but uh, but I, I want you to really understand it so how it's actually going to be used, how it's going to help you uh, to actually develop your creative tasks a little bit more so you actually have a planning document to where you can actually walk through it and really think about what you're actually trying to develop, right? So let me jump into uh, the next part here uh, to where we're actually going to uh, uh, I'm going to show you some of the uh, the samples of the creative tasks that they actually have here in unit 3 uh, so the first one uh, is pretty straightforward uh, we got a ferris wheel here uh, and for the ferris wheel uh, a lot of it is just a, a lot of, of actual uh, uh, drawing functions that they put in there uh, so they actually generate this uh, this ferris wheel kind of out in like a a desert type setting with big mountain with big sandy mountains out 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 behind it and everything uh, so remember they use this app background uh, because this is the one that can actually just fill the whole canvas for us uh, and then the app background uh, setting it to the gradient uh, moccasin uh, papaya whip uh, and it starts at the top so we're actually doing a gradient down through. Uh, the polygons here are what create those mountains. Uh, rotating spikes, um, now this is that star pattern uh, that is actually set up around the ferris wheel itself um, to where that gives you all those little spokes. So the rotating spikes, uh, just kind of setting that up, rotating spikes is actually the only thing that's gonna actually move on this uh, because all this other stuff, all these lines, all these circles and everything, everything on that canvas is actually stationary except the rotating spikes. And do you know how I know this? So it simulates to make it seem like the whole ferris wheel is rotating around. But if you look at that outer edge of that ferris wheel, you see how it's kind of got this uh, this rainbow color almost uh, to work to, uh, if you look at it, you'll notice that it's not actually rotating because the yellow stuff stays here the whole time uh, and never goes up to the top. Now, another thing that you might notice is if I'm not moving my mouse, that ferris wheel doesn't spin. And that's why, because if you look down here uh, where we define the on mouse move, uh, the only time uh, it actually does anything is if I move the mouse. And that's because we're using that on mouse move function. On mouse move, remember, requires motion for it to actually do anything. So anytime we move the mouse, it's actually giving us new, new X's and Y's every time we move the mouse. But in the definition itself, we're not actually using uh, those parameters that are set up, the mouse X and mouse Y. We're just making it rotate. Every so every time we're we're getting new X, new mouse X's and new mouse Y's. It's not actually utilizing that information other than just making sure that we continue to rotate the angle of our rotating spikes, uh, which which simulates the the movement of the Ferris wheel itself. So very basic, but this sample does actually utilize uh, the concepts of. Uh, the on mouse move uh, to where uh, we're kind of simulating motion of of the ferris wheel itself so interesting enough pretty nice so let's go back here and then I'm going to show you the other sample so in this other sample this one's a little bit more in depth so in this sample you're going to look at it and you'll see again they do the the app dot background uh, and they color it black so we're going to kind of feel like space uh, in You'll notice that they use a lot of these uh, these hashtags uh, to kind of break up uh, the code. So this is a, one of those things that uh, that that Mr. Derek was talking about a lot is 
creating code that others can be able to read and understand and, and it makes it a little bit easier so anytime you use those hashtags making those remark statements is really important uh, because it allows you to to kind of section off areas of code uh, to make it more readable for somebody that didn't code it they can actually come in and look at that code and go oh, okay that's what that's doing uh, so so that first section from line uh, three all the way down to line 11 uh, that's where we're adding in the little star dots uh, that, that you can actually see there uh, from line 13 to line 21 uh, we're, we're adding uh, elements to the moon uh, because basically it's just one big gradient uh, uh, a circle and then all the smaller little circles are those little craters that are actually created uh, and then and then we have a few more things called trails and fighters uh, that are actually created there and and actually set to the values of trail one trail two trail three uh, and then fighter one fighter two and fighter three and you're looking at that and All the trails are set up in the top corner uh, And their lines that aren't actually drawn on the screen and then the three fighters are circles that are generated and they're literally uh effectively not even on the on the on the the canvas itself to a certain degree uh, but the reason that they did that is because they're actually creating some presets uh, because now uh, there's a couple helper functions that ha that have been created uh, we we have this uh, defining the move fighter uh, and in move fighter we actually have uh, three parameters that are set up fighter uh, new X and new Y uh, and then uh, as it goes through uh, any uh, any iteration in your move fighter uh, it will take the value that's coming in of new X and new Y and it's going to set it to the center of the fighter uh, that that is that it's actually evaluating at that point uh, so it's basically going to center each new fighter right uh, and then the next helper function is our move trail and then with that that uh, that defined function the move trail um, this actually uh, takes the the information to where it's setting up a parameter of a fighter and a trail uh, and then it when go when it goes through an iteration it takes the value of of x2 and and y2 and it sets it to x1 and y1 of it, of the trail uh, and then it takes the values of that are in the center of the fighter uh, and it sends it to to uh, x2 and y2 uh, so basically it's kind of uh, it's kind of stepping stepping values across uh, in like ordered pairs of like values uh, and the reason it's actually doing this is so if you're using that function and, and if we scroll down here we'll actually go into the on mouse move function if you look in this function what it's actually doing is every time we move the mouse it's going to take the values of mouse X and mouse Y so basically it's going to take the point that the that the mouse is on the screen uh, and then as it moves it's going to give a new value a new value of, of X and Y uh, and put it in, in mouse X and mouse Y uh, and it's going to push it into uh, these uh, these helper functions that have been created the, the the move fighter and the move trail and it's going to basically fill up the the points for uh, creating a line for trail one creating a line for trail two and creating a line for trail three as well as uh, creating the point or the 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 center point of where this this fighter one is fighter two and fighter three so it basically goes through all that information and and depending on how f how fast the mouse is moving it will probably create longer trails and everything so let's kind of test this area out I'm going to come in here and just kind of slowly move on to the canvas 
and I can see like it looks a little snaky and everything but as I start to speed up oh sure enough there are trails that like separate between it and you can see that there's these three fighters that are going around and there's trails in between it and as I'm going and going I stop so I stopped and now we can actually see the three fighters and we can only see the red trail there but let me even go faster and then stop okay so now we can actually see all three fighters and all three trails there uh, because depending on how fast you're actually moving that mouse is how quickly the the python program is going to pull those points uh, it's going to take in values in mouse x and mouse y and then basically uh, add them into the the different positions for fighter one fighter two fighter three trail one trail two and trail three uh, but you can actually see there on the screen uh, that it basically created a, a line uh, for for trail one a line for trail two and see and trail one the blue that is that first line there when you see where the mouse pointer is behind it uh that there's that line one line two is your line one uh and then line three is your red one but you can see that they've created a program using the on mouse move function uh and then even built in some helper functions and everything and made it a little bit more interesting uh, and, and added some uh, additional value into that. But hopefully uh, that kind of gives you something to chew on. Uh, the most important thing about uh, today's class, what I want you to really do is jump into that design document and don't try to just start coding stuff already. Really sit down and kind of think about things and then utilize uh, going through uh, uh, sites on the internet and everything and just kind of think about things like maybe uh, maybe downloading some reference pictures and everything so, so you can uh, draw something cool in there for your creative task uh, and really thinking about uh, some of the some of the ways that you can use those those elements of on mouse move on mouse drag and then uh, and then uh, doing a couple conditionals in there and, and and figuring out a way that you can develop your own helper functions to, to, to really make something uh, kind of fun and inventive with that. Uh, so again I apologize for not uh, being able to be in class uh, but but I did want to uh, to at least give you a video there uh, that will help you walk through the the design document and kind of look at those two samples uh, I will be in class with you guys on Tuesday uh, and I'll have something that I actually created uh, the, to, to kind of give you a little bit more of of, of a thought of, of things that you might be able to add to it but really for today I, I really want you to to think about uh, think about what you want to create vice just jumping in and, and creating something uh, randomly uh, really uh, take the time to uh, to do a little bit of research and everything now if you have the time uh, and and you're you're going through and you've used your design document and everything and you get a chance to actually jump through and, and code and everything go feel free feel free to get it all finished up and everything if you can uh, and and then uh, and then maybe you can add a little bit more of those extra elements and everything for like uh, some bonus credit when, when we get back together on Tuesday uh, but I appreciate you taking the time and enjoying uh, uh, getting in here and, and trying to learn about uh, more Python coding and uh, hopefully this is very informative and it helps you out uh, again I apologize that I'm not in class but uh, hopefully this does help you out and then I know uh, I know Miss Stevens had talked to me to where she's going to uh, add in um, uh, she's going to uh, show you the the winners of some of the other creative tasks and everything so uh, happy programming uh, and I will see y'all soon have a great weekend and I will see you on Tuesday